Whether you just bought or built your new gaming PC, it probably needs setting up. From installing your games to making sure that your RAM is running at the right speeds. And so in this video, I want to explain what you should be doing and how to do it. So let's take a look. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Let's start with the BIOS. Now, I know that this can be a daunting thing to look at, but it's quite important that it's A, up to date and B, you roughly know your way around it as it can be very useful. From having BIOS updates, you can get extra performance you can get better stability, you can overclock further, and a number of other things, so it's always good to keep up to date. Now, if you bought your PC, most of these things will be pre-done for you, but especially if you built it or if you bought it a little while ago, it could be good to do some of these things even after you've already, you know, initially set it up, which a BIOS update is a great one to start with. Now, to do a BIOS update, all you really need is a USB stick, although an extra computer on hand to set Set up the USB stick could be useful, although you can use the one that you're going to be updating as long as it currently has a, an operating system installed. Now, to get the BIOS file to update, it's pretty simple. All you need to know is what motherboard you have in your system. Now, the one that I have here is an ASRock B450 Steel Legend, and so what I do is just Google that name and it takes you to the product page. For, from that manufacturer. Now, you're gonna be looking for a tab or a button that says support or downloads, and then you're gonna be looking for the BIOS file. Download the most recent version, open the normally zip folder, and copy whatever is in that zip folder to your USB stick, ideally into the, the root directory, just as soon as you open the USB stick, copy all the stuff there. Then you can unplug your USB stick from your creation machine. If the creation machine is the same one, you can leave it plugged in, and then restart or start up your gaming PC and press delete a whole load of times until the BIOS appears. Once it does, most motherboard vendors have an easy flash tool uh, that can be accessed a number of different ways. Often, especially in the easy mode version of the BIOS, it's one of the F keys that will be listed on screen. Find your motherboard's easy flash tool or whatever is similar, and then select the BIOS file that you've downloaded on the USB stick and start the installation. Now, if your BIOS is already the most up-to-date version, you don't need to do this, but it is worth checking every now and again as BIOS updates do come out reasonably regularly. The PC will likely reboot after a BIOS update, which is fine because you'll want to enter the BIOS one more time to check your RAM settings. Now your RAM often comes with a profile saved on it uh, that is not the same as the base frequency. With DDR4 memory, the base frequency of RAM is often either 2133 or 2400 megahertz, which can often be a significant difference from the rated speed that you may have paid for. For example, with Ryzen chips, the recommended speed is DDR 3600, so that's a pretty big difference. Now to enable that setting, it's normally pretty simple. You're looking for either the words or the letters XMP, Extreme Memory Profile, or DOCP, which you can find in mostly AMD boards. Now, either way, what you want to do is enable either XMP or DOCP. If it gives you an option for loading a profile, it's normally profile one, and that is pretty much that. You can press F10, save, and you're good to go. Now, once the PC restarts again and you boot into what I assume is Windows, you might find out that one of your hard drives is missing from this PC. Now, that's pretty simple. It means that your drive hasn't been initialized yet and there's no volume created on it, which is fine, we can fix that really easily. What you do is open uh, Windows Explorer, uh, go to this PC and select the manage option from the top bar and then press the uh, disk management option. Now, often this will pop up immediately with an option to initialize any uninitialized drives. So select the, uh, normally the, the MBR master boot record um, setting and click okay, yes, and that kind of thing. And then scroll down in the sort of bottom tab to the large block with the black bar over the top. It will say unallocated. Right click on that and click new simple volume. You can basically spam next through the wizard until you get to the name your drive and give it a letter. 
You can leave the letter as is if you like, give it a name ideally, and then you can press finish and your drive is ready to use. Finally, as a handy tip when installing programs on your new PC, there is a website called Ninite which lets you select a whole load of your commonly used programs and have them all automatically installed with one installer file, which just makes things really simple and really easy. All you do is go to the website and check all the checkboxes, then click the get installer, run it, and it will automatically install all of your programs that you've selected, normally to their default save location, which is normally your C drive, but still very handy to use. One thing to mention with Steam specifically and a lot of the other games platforms is that they will by default install to your C drive and you won't necessarily be able to easily install games to your main hard drive unless, especially for Steam, you create a Steam library library folder there. Now doing that is pretty simple, all you do is open Steam while you're logged in, press the Steam button in the top left hand corner, and then click settings, downloads, and uh, manage Steam libraries folders, and then you can press the add library folder uh, button at the bottom left. Then you can create a folder on your hard drive and select that, and then that's pretty much it. I would recommend right clicking on that new folder in the Steam window and making it your default save location, which can be very very handy so when you're installing games it will automatically default to there but if there are some games that may benefit from being on an SSD instead those loading times I know then you can also manually change where your game installs to when you you know go to install each game every time so there you go that was hopefully a few helpful tips for you so you can set up your new gaming PC just that little bit better a little bit easier and if you have any questions, uh, then feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Also, if you're more knowledgeable than needing this video and you have any other suggestions, then feel free to also leave those in the comments down below as well. Otherwise, if you want to see more Tech Explained videos, I've got a number of them explaining CPU names, GPU names, uh, motherboards, PSUs, and a whole lot of other stuff. So check out the playlist that will be on the end cards over there. If you want to see more videos like this one, like I said, you can check out that subscribe button. And if you want to check out any sort of parts, for example, of my PC, then there is a load of links in the description down below too. Otherwise, there's also a load of links you can check out in the uh, description to support the channel. There are a load of affiliate links from people like Overclocked UK if you're buying from them, or stuff like merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or a load of other cool and new designs. And there's even stuff like VPN options, Hubble Bundle for cheap games support charities, Streamlabs, OES, and learn start streaming, and just a whole load of stuff. So feel free to check it out. Otherwise, like I said, do check out some videos over there. And if you've got any questions, leave those in the comments down below. But otherwise, we'll see you all in the next video.